Hello everyone, Jeff and Jay here with another edition of Jay's Big Adventure, Jay's the Fuzzy One. And today we're doing something a little more mundane. We have a 2003 Toyota Camry that we've owned since new, and it is time for front brake pads. The rotors are in pretty good shape, we'll show you that. But this process is going to be very similar on many Japanese cars and many domestic cars. We thought if we're going to do it, we might as well film it. So, so the first thing we need to do is jack the car up so we can take the wheel off. To do that, we're going to run the floor jack. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. We're going to run the floor jack under the car, and there's a frame rail right here, and that's what we're going to jack the car up on. Once we get the car in the air, we'll put a jack stand under that to make sure that the car is secure while we're doing the work. Now we're going to release the floor jack. So there's weight on both. So here is why it is so important to make sure that the car is properly supported. As you can see, I've got the car sitting on the jack stand as well as the floor jack. What you can't see is that this wheel is off the ground. So even though I've jacked the car up straight, this is actually twisting the jack that way. And if I start really hammering on this, either the, the lug nuts or on the, the brake calipers or what have you, I could actually knock that car off the jack. Always have at least two places that the car is being supported. So to take the lug bolts off, we've got a couple of options. <clears throat> One, we can use a traditional breaker bar. This is reliable, they're cheap, and you can apply a lot of torque. The other way is to get an impact gun, and they come in two different types. There are electric ones like this one is, and there are pneumatic ones which require an air hose and a compressor. These don't have as much torque as the air powered ones, but for most home mechanics, they work just great. This is a 21 millimeter socket. Sometimes the wheel is going to be rusted onto the hub, and that was because they didn't put anti seize on the flame. This one looks like it was done properly, and it just comes right off. So, now what I want to do is I want to get this piston back into the caliper because the new pads are going to be thicker than the old ones. If I don't do that, the caliper won't fit back over the rotor. So all I'm going to do is take a big screwdriver and get between the surface of the rotor and the old brake pad. I'm just going to slowly push and if you watch, <clears throat> you can see this brake puck move back into the caliper. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. Light up, lift the light up. There we go. And now all that space is there for the new pads. Now that we have room for the new pads, when we put the caliper back on, it's time to take the bolts out, and then the caliper will just lift off. One of the things to check once you have the the piston pushed back into the caliper is does this slide back and forth? These are actually pins that the caliper slides on. On high performance cars, you have a piston on both sides and they clamp together. 
in this style there's only one big piston on this side but these have to float and if they don't then there's a problem as you can see these move relatively easily so I think we're going to be okay but when we have these out we're going to put a little bit of lithium grease on there to make sure that they continue to slide easily. On some cars, if you get lucky, you can just pivot the caliper out of the way. The pads just come right out. Because we live here in Salt Lake City, Utah, our normal driving is significantly harder on brakes than it would be if we were someplace that was flat, like it was back in Indiana. So I typically go with a higher quality pad. This is a Bosch Quiet Cast. It is a ceramic based pad, supposed to give significantly better performance. And as you can tell, we were really close to running out of brakes. I'm a little ashamed that I let this get that far. Let's see if we can get this to focus here. So there's the old pad. It is down to almost nothing. This is the new one. So as you can see, uh, we were cutting it pretty close, but with those new pads on there, this should significantly help the braking of the Camry coming down out of the mountains. We're gonna put these pads in and then we'll go to the other side. So now with the new pads in place, we should just be able to lower the caliper back down. <laughs> and we still did not get that puck pushed in far enough. So what I'm gonna do is take one of the pads out. And now we're gonna pry again to try to get that back in place. To do that, we're gonna put this back bolt on to hold the caliper in place and that'll give us a little more leverage. With the wheel in place, we're gonna run the lug nuts down with the impact gun and then we'll torque them to 80 foot pounds. Now it's time to do the final torque with a torque wrench set to 80. And always tighten them in a star pattern. Once I'm done, we're going to go on a test drive. We'll drive it 30 or 40 miles and then torque them one last time. Now it's time for the other side. So Jay and I made a rookie mistake. When you push that piston and the caliper back in to the caliper, it pushes the fluid up the hose and back into the reservoir. My mistake was not checking to see if that reservoir was full. And unfortunately, at some point, somebody added fluid because the pads were wearing. And when I pushed that puck back in, or that piston back in, it overflowed. And now I have brake fluid all over the car and all over the floor. And I've cleaned a good bit of it up, but I wanted to show you this because this is important. Before you do the brake job, always make sure that you have room in the container for the brake fluid that's going to come out of that piston. Now I've got a mess to clean up. So what I'm going to do, this is just a turkey baster. I'm just going to suck some, some fluid out. and then transfer it in here. And now this is a sealed container and I can take it to the car parts store to have it recycled. 
Okay, now that I have the other side done and there's no more fluid coming out, it is full. Time to put the cap on, then go for a test drive. Before we do that though, there's one really important thing we need to do, and that is to pump the brake pedal to make sure that we've taken up all the slack in the system. Remember, we push those pads apart, push that piston back into the caliper. Last thing I want to do coming out of the garage is put it in reverse, step in the brakes, and have it go all the way to the floor. And this is pretty good. I think we're ready to go. Okay, so we are back from our test drive and everything works like we expect it to, so that's a very good sign. Got the cap back on, checked through level again, and we should be good to go. There are a couple of final steps that are very important. First of all, it's going to take a while for the brake pads to fully bed in. There are minor variations in the pad surface and the rotor surface, and until those properly mate, they're not going to get maximum braking power. The other thing that's important is that once you've gone a hundred or two miles, you need to go find a great big flat, long, straight stretch of road and do four or five hard stops from 60 miles an hour, just as fast as you can. The brakes are going to smell. You may see some smoke, but that is normal. That smoke and that smell is the binding agents that are used to make the pad burning off. It's called degassing the pads. Until you have done that, the brakes are not going to give maximum performance. If you don't do this last step and you come down out of the mountains and you're pulling a trailer and you're riding the brakes, the decassing is going to happen in a time when you may not want it to. That pedal can go all the way to the floor and it can cause you to lose control. So go find a flat stretch of road, stop it hard four or five times from 60, and then immediately drive the car at 40 or 50 miles an hour to let the pads and the rotors completely cool off. And that will give you maximum performance for the rest of the life of the pads. So that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Jay appreciates it. Please like, please watch, please share, please subscribe. And we'll have another video out soon.